Hi everyone! Welcome back to my channel. Today I'm making instant pot cheesecake with a Halloween twist. So if you guys want to know how to make this, please hit that subscribe button and watch me cook! You guys all know cheesecake takes a little while to make, but it does go a little bit faster with the instant pot. And let me tell you, by far my most favorite way to make this. We don't need too many ingredients for this whole entire process, but I mean, cheesecake, baking, everything takes time. It, but it's all worth it in the end, especially with this recipe in particular. Now, I don't know how you guys generally crush up your graham crackers, but this is how I'm going to do it. You need one whole sleeve of this, so nine graham crackers in total. I'm going to throw it all into a quart size Ziploc bag, and then I'm just going to crush it up right in there. I am having my kid help me with this because she really wanted to help me, so if you see little tiny hands, it's her. <laughs> so I'm going to pass this on to her and let her hold on to this, and I'm going to show you guys my butter trick here. I did not leave, leave the butter out to soften, so I'm just going to cut them up into small pieces, and then I'm going to put it in the microwave on the defrost setting and check it every 30 to 45 seconds until it melts completely. The smaller cubes will help it from blowing up inside your microwave. Alright, back to the graham crackers. She wanted to do it her way first. I would highly not recommend that. So, uh, I let her have at it because kids in the kitchen, you know, they want to help out and you want them to help out and so this is what you do. But this is her just pounding away. Again, not recommended. Do not do this part. If you have some sort of mallet or whatever else, use that instead, but I didn't. So I am using a soy sauce jar or bottle here. And all I'm going to do, well she's doing this first, but what I ended up doing was just pressing down and rolling until it became fine sand like this. And this is going to be our graham cracker crust. So again to show you quickly, just press and roll. That's it. And it breaks up pretty easily after a while. Now that that's taken care of, I'm going to take the melted butter and I'm going to pour it right inside of the bag. And it will be warm, but not hot to touch. So I'm going to seal it up by, you know, take all the air out of it. And I'm going to let my kid actually just kind of mush it all up together so that everything is like wet sand at this point. So while she's busy with that, I did go ahead and grease a 7 inch springform pan. This will fit inside of your Instant Pot. You can use a six or seven inch pan for this recipe. I am using a seven inch one because it came in the set that I purchased recently. If you have some sort of pasty, pastry, pe ooh, that was hard to say, pastry press, use that to help press down your graham crackers. I started off with a wooden spoon and you're gonna see, not exactly my best. So I went ahead and just used my fist and I went ahead and pressed it all down. as you know, gently but firmly as possible and then I'm going to let it, uh, I'm going to try to smooth it out and then what I'm going to do after this is throw this in the freezer while I prep everything else. For me, you need the full fat of cream cheese. So get two bricks of the, not the low fat or whatever kind of it is, I don't know, just get the good delicious kind, okay? <laughs> make sure you have it softened and so I just let mine sit on the counter for a couple of hours to make sure it was softened. And then I added a half a cup of Splenda in mine. You use sugar for you if you need to, but you, know, you guys know I just need the Splenda for me. If you have an electric mixer, I highly recommend using that. I couldn't find it anywhere, so I went ahead and used this. And you're going to see I'm going to end up changing this into a fork later. But for now, this is what I was using. We will be adding one egg at a time. Well, for the rest of the ingredients, everything is just going to be one at a time. But I threw the one egg in and we're going to start mixing it. And then we're going to throw the second egg in. There we go. And then we're going to start mixing that as well. I let my daughter help out here so it's going to move a little bit slower. But I went ahead and added a whole teaspoon of vanilla right into the mix. You can see the little brown spot right there. And that's what we're doing next. And I wasn't too happy with the texture of the way everything was turning out so far. So I went ahead and added another just the yolk of a third egg. And then just mix away. That's it. Just mix it until you get to the texture that it is that you'd like to see it at. 
So you're going to see I'm going to keep beating this up until I like it to my liking. And you can see how it smooths out because I was using my fork and I was moving as fast as I can. And doing this by hand is possible. Obviously, it took like, I don't know, a good five minutes of me mixing this as fast as I possibly could to get to this kind of texture. So again, I highly recommend an electric mixer if you have one. Now grab your graham cracker crust from the freezer and let's just pour our filling right inside of the pan. Scrape every single bit of that up because you just worked really hard to make all of this so we don't want to waste any bit of this. I am using a rice spatula because it's flat and so it helps me kind of press everything down and flatten and smooth everything out nice and evenly. Use whatever tool it is that you normally use or whatever you prefer. This is not necessary, it's just what I happen to have on hand. Now we, before we move everything into the Instant Pot, we're going to make ourselves a sling here for our cheesecake or the springform pan. So we're going to grab a long sheet. I couldn't even tell you how many inches or whatever. It's a long sheet, but you want to make sure it's able to wrap over, fold where you can hold it up like a sling. And just fold these into thirds and put your pan right in there to make sure you can hold it. Does that make any sense? You guys will see how it all works out. I am using my egg wire basket and I put one and a half cups of water in on the bottom. I'm going to, again, before we start this part, let me show you. We are going to put a paper towel and then a loose covered aluminum foil sheet right on top. You guys know the Instant Pot creates a lot of moisture so we don't want to ruin our cheesecake here. So we're going to protect it as much as we can. But once you have everything loosely on top, we're going to go ahead and pull up our sling so that we can carry this into our Instant Pot. And we're gonna fold down everything so it fits all nicely in there and sits on top of the wire rack. See how the sling was very helpful in trying to move things around? And it's gonna be very helpful when it's time to take it out of the Instant Pot as well. You'll, you guys will see all this. I'm gonna cook this on high pressure um, for 35 minutes. Make sure your seal is closed and let it do its magic at this point. Now, we are going to let this natural release for 15 minutes, at least 15 minutes on its own. We are not going to bring that seal button or seal knob over to vent. Do not touch this, leave it alone for a good 15 minutes. For me, 17 minutes later, now that I've not let it naturally release at 17 minutes, you guys see, I went ahead and pulled the knob over to the vent side so it releases whatever is left inside of there. Once it's done venting, carefully open the lid away from you so you don't get any of that steam towards you. And look at all that liquid. This is why we need to protect our cheesecake. So that's why we needed the napkin and the foil on top of it so it doesn't make it wet. But carefully remove this out of your Instant Pot. And I'm gonna use the wire rack that I have inside and place this on top. And we are gonna let it sit for one hour on the counter. Can you believe this was actually made from the Instant Pot? I mean, I had my doubts, but this was impressive. And guess what? I am in love with this cheesecake. So after letting it sit out for a whole hour, this is what it looks like. And now I'm gonna loosely cover it back up and I'm gonna put it away in my refrigerator, you want to do it for at least four hours up to overnight. And mine's going to go overnight because I started this too late in the evening. And at that, this point, um, don't worry about the pan. It's not too hot to touch or anything. Everything was nice and cooled off by then. Not cool, but you know, not hot to touch. And I will see you tomorrow. Alright, now we're going to be on day two here because I let it sit overnight. And all I'm going to do is grab a knife and run it across the edge so that when I do release the springform pan, it does come up without, you know, tearing apart my cheesecake. But before we do this, and by the way, you guys can put whatever topping, eat it as is, however it is that you like. Use fresh fruit, use chocolate, caramel syrups, whatever it is that you like. But what I'm doing here is I'm going to just make like a little Halloween theme kind of dessert. This is the dirt that I'm making for my ghost. And all I'm taking is Oreo cookies, removing the cream, and I have the bowl there so I can put my cream inside of there. And I'm gonna put my cookies inside a bag and do the exact same thing that I did with the graham crackers. Just crush and roll until you get it to the texture that you want it for your dirt.
it's not necessary to see all that but this is how I wanted it and that's how it looks and now I'm gonna get my cheesecake and I'm gonna pour this right on top the pan keeps it from going everywhere before you release it open so this is a good thing but decorate again however it is that you'd like and this is what I am doing and just so you know you probably only need like 6 to 12 Oreo cookies you know both sides of Oreo cookies to make this dirt anything more than that is just a whole bunch of extra that we ended up having and I'll show you what I did with that in just a little bit alright my kids been begging to make this one so it's just a pudding cup with the Oreos crushed on there and a worm to make the dirt cups she just really wanted to try this and it's something that she loves so it turned out amazing obviously because it's cookies and pudding so why not as for me, I used the dirt down there that you see with ghost marshmallows and I just put them right on top with the Spooky Squad sign in the back. And that's it. Again, decorate however you'd like. But if you guys like this recipe, please hit that subscribe button, like it, share it. And until the next meal, thank you for watching. Watch me cook.